The trial and crucifixion of Christ may very well have been one of the best examples of democracy, exposed as nothing much more than mob rule. It's a story about how a small group of people are able to manipulate the masses to demand of the state that Jesus be murdered for saying things they didn't like. In the book of Luke, the Roman governor says, Ye have brought this man unto me as one that perverteth the people. And behold, I, having examined him before you, have found no fault in this man touching these things whereof ye accuse him. But the mind-controlled mob cried out, Crucify him, crucify him. And the governor replied, Why, what evil hath he done? I have found no cause of death in him. But the Bible says that the murderous people were instant with loud voices requiring that he might be crucified. I alluded to this in my novel, Much Ado About Corona, when Vincent is waiting to be taken away to a quarantine facility on Christmas Eve, he notices a wreath adorned with holly. Christ, Dorn, I muttered to myself, much to my own surprise. Christ, Dorn is a rather archaic way of saying holly in German, so Stephanie had told me when I had given her one of Mum's wreaths, not to be confused with the Christus Dorn plant, which looked nothing like holly. Both botanical names, however, mean the thorn of Christ, referring to the crown of thorns the Roman soldiers wedged into Jesus' head. His crime? Healing the sick and dying while opposing the high priest of the Sanhedrin. I stared at the reef with its pointy leaves spotted with the blood-red fruit, realizing that I, too, was being hauled away like a criminal by a tyrannical government. My crime? Caring for the sick and dying while opposing the high priests of sanitization. In both cases, the masses were manipulated to demand the state kidnap and even murder people who were not conforming to the agenda of a small group of power-hungry elitists. Psychologically and metaphysically, I believe, out of that refusal to give in to the collective, we abandon the, quote, ways of the world, unquote, and resurrect our unique individuality from the tomb of tribalism. I don't know about you, but those years I spent refusing to go along with logic-defying and soul-destroying COVID mandates very much felt like a little death and resurrection. It certainly does for Vincent McKnight in Much Ado About Corona. He starts off as a typical 20-year-old male who can binge-watch all three Lord of the Rings movies in one night to becoming a man who puts principle, self-respect, and love above conformity, security, and fear. As the latest reviewer on Amazon says, Much Ado About Corona dramatizes the trauma experienced by Canadian society during the early years of the COVID crisis, paying particular attention to the minority segment who did their own research and maintained the ability to think critically through the panic reaction to Quote, unprecedented times, unquote. I love the idealism of the protagonist and his friends and the small town northern Ontario setting of the story. Now, my humble novel may not be the greatest political story ever told, but it's certainly the greatest novel about non-compliance during the corona scandemic ever written, because, well, it's the only one. In my interview on the Iron Will Report, Will Dove and I talked about how much ado about Corona dealt with the fear of death and how it parallels this theme depicted in all but one Bible story that we were aware of. If you haven't seen or heard the interview, you may want to give it a listen this Easter break. The link is in the description below. Tomorrow I'll be sending you part one of a three-part story recounting a hard lesson I learned on Easter Day way back when I was 18 living in a Hindu monastery in the mountains of Southern California. Stay tuned.